Hey guys, it's Mitch. How's it going? We're taking a look today at part two of Jim Starlin's Cosmic Annual storyline as we look at Marvel 2-in-1 Annual number 2. So just before we get into it, if you enjoy the channel, if you feel like you might want to help out a little bit, go subscribe to my Patreon. Links are in the description. Gives you early access to everything I do. Helps out the channel and helps to buy more comics. So I think if, like, six months ago, you told me I was going to be doing a video for Marvel 2-in-1 Annual Number 2. First of all, I would have been like, why would I ever do an issue of Marvel 2-in-1 where I didn't even know they had annuals? Because I've never read an issue of Marvel 2-in-1. From what I understand, it's pretty much the same as Marvel Team-Up. Only this one usually stars The Thing. Marvel Team-Up is Spider-Man's book. And teamed up with another superhero they have, I don't know, a weird little adventure? Probably like a one-shot thing. I don't know if there's anything good in Marvel 2 and 1, to be honest. I feel like I should check that out maybe a little bit. But this one is a little different. Because, uh, I mean, around this time, Jim Starlin came up with a cool story that was kind of an Avengers story. Uh, so they put that in Avengers number 7. And then it seems like he came up with a second chapter to that. And they're like, I don't know, man. We got another annual coming up for Marvel 2 and 1. And I guess Jim was like, that's perfect. I'll tailor it so that Thanos goes up against Spider-Man and the Thing. It's like, that makes absolute sense. Sure. So why don't we get into this? We can start with the cover, uh, which is like, okay, this is more like decent pinup territory, I would say, than like good cover territory. But we're going to get, I mean, it's going to be Spider-Man and the Thing versus Thanos. So why not show a shot of Thanos beating the Thing with Spider-Man, right? I mean, if you really want to make it brutal, you kind of reverse it, right? And have, have him beaten Spider-Man with a thing? Just fucking spiders? Smack, 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 smack. So yeah, it's like a cool enough shot, I guess. It's not up to snuff with what was on Avengers Annual number 7. And that's a little bit reflective of what we're going to get in the comic, which generally isn't quite as good as what was in that issue. We get the feeling that uh, this might be a little bit rushed. There's still a few pretty cool images in here, but they're a bit more few and far between. All right, so we're going to start off with Peter Parker asleep in his bed and having visions about what went on in Avengers number seven, because we need to recap you. This is going to be, of course, written and drawn by Jim Starlin with finishes by Joe Rubenstein. It's a pretty good combo. Again, they're not quite up to snuff with what happened last issue, but... I, you know, at the very least, they can get the job done. And I mean, you know, Jim Starlin and Joe Rubenstein, not quite at 100%, tends to beat out quite a few guys around this time. And we start out here with, it's 3 a.m., you are asleep, and your name is Peter Parker. And it's like, how did you know that? Oh, wait, you meant, he's Peter, yes, of course, he's Peter Parker. And yeah, we're going to get a recap of what happened in the last issue, wherein Thanos was determined to fly around the universe, I guess, destroying suns. And he fixed his sights on our sun. So the Avengers had to spring into action to try and stop him. With the aid of Captain Marvel, Moon Dragon, and Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock, the demon, the god slayer, the raving fucking lunatic. And we got some pretty good shots here of some, like, Avengers action. That's all right stuff. Not quite everyone, I don't think. I don't see Thor or Iron Man, although they get featured right here, really. Uh, because, of course, the Avengers were first going on the doppelganger, I guess, of Thanos' actual ship. So the big H-shaped ship. And um, so Captain Marvel and Adam Warlock flew to the other side of the sun, where the real Thanos ship was. And Thor and Iron Man followed, probably quite a bit slower. Adam Warlock and Captain Marvel boarded the ship and were able to wreck the device Thanos was using to destroy Suns. He'd gotten at least one, anyway. So they were able to bust that shit up before he destroyed our Sun. Captain Marvel managed to knock himself out, which left just Adam Warlock to try and take down Thanos by himself. That's okay. He's the God Slayer and the Demon and the frothing at the mouth savior of humanity. Uh, Thanos managed to do something which killed Adam Warlock. Uh, killed him slowly, but it did kill him. Um, I, that was never entirely made clear. It almost looked kind of like radiation or some kind of thing. At which point, uh, Thor and Iron Man caught up, 
Thor engaged Thanos directly. Iron Man is not going to get anywhere close because he knows Thanos will like just turn him into a fucking tinfoil ball. So instead, he flew around and smashed everything he could, starting with Thanos' synthetic soul gem, which canceled Thanos' entire plan. And that's pretty much where that issue ended. Um, well, it also had a little bit at the end where Adam Warlock was in the Soul Gem, which is essentially heaven. And we realize that uh, Pete is not just randomly dreaming about all this, and you know he doesn't all of a sudden have precognitive abilities. Uh, actually, Moon Dragon is uh, calling out to him telepathically. I'm not sure if she meant to call out to him particularly. That doesn't seem like it would really be the case, but it seems to be more like a general SOS. So what happened after that issue was... After being defeated aboard his own ship, he teleported himself back onto the copy of his ship that was engaged with the other Avengers and the forces marshaled to defend Earth. And with him back on the battlefield directing his troops, uh, they started to turn the tide of the battle and they quickly captured all of the Avengers that were fighting there. Thanos got his, uh, his ship ready to fire. Just regular shooting down shit. He can't destroy the sun anymore because he knows that the Avengers are going to be coming back for him. So when Thor and Iron Man and Captain Marvel come flying back towards him, he's able to blow them out of the sky fairly easily. That's some pretty good stuff and kind of fun to see uh, the last issue be continued directly. There's no real gap in between where that issue left off and where we're picking up. So now Thanos has the Avengers in stasis. And he's just so stoked about it. Just spends hours of every day just standing in front of him, flexing. Like, look on my works, ye mighty and despair. They don't say he spends hours in front of them or anything. I just That's just what I assume. Uh, so his troops, which are space criminals, recover Adam Warlock's body from his other ship. And the first thing Thanos does is take the soul gem from Adam Warlock's forehead. So he doesn't have the combined power of all six soul gems anymore. But one is pretty good. That's still powerful enough to cause some pretty heavy damage. And at that point, Pete wakes up, realizes that, you know, yeah, it was a dream, but it was also the truth. That's what happened. And he's got to figure out fucking something to do about that. That's got to be a bit of a rough situation. Just being like, oh, shit, I'm a dude who swings around rooftops and queens on webs. And there's a space battle going on that I have to somehow turn the tide of. Not even really being able to get into space. From there, we cut to... Uh, Lord Chaos and Master Order, who are representations of Chaos and Order, and they're opposing Thanos in this particular case, uh, and they represent life, which is an interesting idea. Thanos is death, that's clear. But yeah, no, life is represented by Chaos and Order, which is like, yeah, no, that's that's fair. And Spider-Man is going to act as one of their agents in this particular war. Uh, the other one is going to be the Thing, because he's the star of this weird little comic. So Spider-Man, swinging along, thinks to himself, Okay, how the fuck do I get into space? And he's like, okay, do I know anybody who has access to a spaceship? And, you know, luckily, he actually does. He's like, okay, I, you know what? The first thing I did when I became Spider-Man was I went and uh, attacked the FF. Because I mean, you know, like I was 16, I wasn't very bright. But we've hung out since then. I bet you I can convince them to help me out in this case. So he swings over to the Baxter building. Uh, where the thing is staying up late reading Salem's Lot, because that came out this year, which is weird. And he's like just sitting there in the dark, freaking himself out. I guess this is something Ben does fairly often. And Spider-Man, of course, sneaks into the Baxter building and just pokes Ben in the head, which causes him to inhale his cigar. Ben chews him out for wrecking his nice cigar uh, and for sneaking into the Baxter building past all of Reed's defense systems. Not to mention, you know, scaring the shit out of him when he's reading a spooky book. And uh, his all of his jabbering kind of gets to Spidey, so Spidey yells at him to shut up. <laughs> it's a big cartoon lettering that's not very good. I'm guessing that's uh, Jim Starlin there, maybe. And Spider-Man has to try and convince him that he dreamed about a space battle going on that was real, and he has to try and stop it. So, uh, two cups of caffeine and a doozy of a story later... They're just kind of sitting around a table with Spidey with his mask up over his nose because, you know, he's got to drink his coffee. And the thing is like, what the fuck have you been smoking? He says that. What have you been smoking, kid? And then he just follows it up with old tennis shoes. It's like, yes, that's 
That must be what he's been smoking. A lot of ads in this issue. I'm guessing the annuals were kind of a particular opportunity to get a lot of ad revenue. So Spidey's like, no, no, for real, this this is actually going on, and I understand it's completely ridiculous, but I'm I'm trying to convince you. And the thing believes him. He's like, okay, you know what? We've always been cool. Um, you've always been kind of a straight shooter, so we'll we'll go check it out. How's that? So Reed's got an experimental spacecraft that he's been wanting Ben to test fly anyway. So they're going to go and see if they can find anything. He's like, so where's the space battle going on? And, and Spidey's like, uh, right of the Earth facing the sun. He's like, yes, those are excellent directions. Thank you for that. Which I like. It's not like Spidey would get any kind of coordinates from his messed up dream. So they escape the atmosphere. They start seeing if there's anything out there that requires their attention. They're able to find something pretty quick. Um, and they start heading towards it. And, of course, it's Thanos' massive ship. And the thing said, it must be almost a mile across. And he's still got all of the uh, the space criminals' ships flying around it. So they're still in a position to attack. This thing isn't done yet, not by a long shot. So the FF craft gets pulled aboard Thanos' ship by a tractor beam. And the thing is like, okay, you know what? I've been in this situation before. They're going to try and rush us. So I say we rush them first. Which is fun. The thing goes to space all the time. And yeah, they go out into the hangar. They get rushed by a bunch of, you know, monster alien types. And the thing is going to take point because he figures, okay, I'm the big tough one. So you just hang back. But Spidey doesn't like to do that shit. He's going to pick off the little people-sized dudes while the thing focuses on the bigger threats. And it's, you know, just kind of a fun brawl in the, with a bunch of uh, aliens in a hangar here. It's all right. The thing picks up a big kind of serpent monster and starts swinging them around. Thanos notices the commotion going on in his hangar and says, okay, well, we're not having that. So he turns off all the gravity in the room. And you can get a fun shot here of everybody floating around. That's that's pretty good, actually. And you get the, you know, the perspective shot of the room. And Spidey and the Thing are essentially useless in zero grav. Uh, and you got to figure at least some of Thanos' minions can get by okay. So they actually take them out here pretty quick. Uh, weird little moment where uh, the Thing is like, they've already taken out Spidey, which means it's only a matter of time before I'm... Neeked? I'm not sure how that gets by editors without them going, so what were you thinking here, really? <laughs> I assume that's meant to be next, but it's so twisted. It's like, I don't know, there's so many extra letters in there. Anyway, cutting back to Lord Chaos and Master Order, they're kind of like, well, shit, our pawns have uh, been swept off the boards. So that's okay, we've still got our main game piece, which is Adam Warlock within the Soul Gem. So, having said that, we cut to Inside the Soul Gem, where Adam Warlock is hanging out with his buddies, with Gamora, who keeps getting put forth as, like, sort of a lost potential love interest, which is interesting, and his buddy Pip, as well as every supervillain whose soul he has ever absorbed into the Soul Gem. And they all just kind of hang out there. Nobody tries to, like, attack each other or anything, because uh, inside the Soul Gem, everybody is a part of the Soul Gem, so everybody is a part of everybody else. And it's all just kind of very nice and peaceful. It's like, oh, that's, that's all right. That sounds like a good deal. All right, cut back to Thanos' ship. Spidey wakes up, and he's in Thanos' trophy room in front of all of the stasis uh, Avengers. Okay, Splash. Um, I mean, there could have been more to this, it feels like. But, I again, I think they're going pretty fast. I mean, this is... Uh, Jim Starlin's second consecutive 48-page annual. I don't know what kind of frequency these come out in, but, I mean, that's that's a lot of pages to put in in a short amount of time, probably. And, yeah, so Thanos uh, brags to the, the thing in uh, Spider-Man, being like, ah, look at me. I beat all the Avengers. I got the Soul Gem. Adam Warlock's dead. So now I'm going to use his Soul Gem. I can't destroy every single star ever, like I originally planned, unfortunately. But... The Soul Jam, at least, still has enough power that I can destroy your son, and fuck you guys, that's what I'm gonna do. And the Thing and Spidey are a little dumbstruck by this, because, I mean, even the Thing, I don't think most of the threats he deals with are actively trying to destroy, like, massive quantities of life. It, it, they generally have their own purposes they're trying to fulfill. Thanos doesn't do that, of course. He just, he wants death on a grand scale. 
And, uh, you know, things ask him why. He's like, well, for death. Cause, and then he goes through his whole motivation about how he fell in love with death. And he's doing anything to try and appease her. Particularly since the last t- scheme he had uh, kind of blew up in his face. She was helping him to find the Cosmic Cube. And then after his failure, when he kind of recovered himself, he realized he no longer had Death's favor. So, like, he's, he's desperate. So Death friends zone him, and God damn it, he's going to show her that he's boyfriend material after all. So, uh, obviously, the Thing isn't too happy with that. So he's going to introduce Thanos to his world-famous knuckle-knockout formula. You gotta love silly 70s comics, you know. You get this gigantic grandstanding villain who's trying to destroy all life in the solar system. And the Thing replies, I'm going to give you my knuckle-knockout formula. And Thanos swats the Thing away instantly. The Thing might be a big, tough rock monster, but this is kind of a different scale. And seeing the Thing get knocked aside with, like, minimal effort... Spider-Man, you know, kind of readies himself for a second and then goes, I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Which I kind of enjoy. Like, he has a panic attack. He's not capable of dealing with this threat. He can do absolutely nothing. What's he going to do that the Thing couldn't do? You know, his usual adversaries are guys like the Vulture or Electro or Doc Ock, who are basically glorified bank robbers, who occasionally have a grander scheme in mind that might put you know, hundreds or even thousands at risk. Except now he's up against a fucking demigod whose ambitions are to wipe out all life in the universe and he's putting plans in motion to achieve that particular goal and he's making progress. So yeah, Spider-Man runs for his fucking life and Thanos is like, what? That's not how this works. And he kind of swings through the ship and his mind races. He's like, "What, what do I do? Where do I go? Even if I get to the Thing's ship, I have no idea how to fly it. But I can't stay here if I stick around. I'll just get killed. And then again, even if I get back to Earth, Thanos is going to destroy the the solar system. Like, imminently. So I can't do anything. And honestly, he'd probably kick the shit out of literally everybody. Except maybe Thor. Well, shit. I guess I gotta go back and try to wake up Thor. And he's kind of swinging through and knocking out some of Thanos' lesser minions along the way. But I I like this whole process where he has to kind of think through the process. Like, he says he had a panic attack. Like, that was some blind panic number I just ran myself through. Sure glad it passed. This is 1977. Uh, Panic attacks aren't exactly the kind of thing that's accepted as common. And it's, I think, a realistic reaction for what should be a B-tier character, really, in terms of power and scope. Except, you know, just the the popularity of the character obviously propels it past that. So, Chaos and Order do a collective, whew! Um, Spidey swings back into Thanos' room, where Thanos is still pissed off that Spider-Man did not stick around to get crushed. And Spidey can't think of too much to do. Obviously, he's not going to recognize his technology, so he's like, okay, fuck it, what if I smash the thing that's holding the Avengers in stasis? So just kind of jumps through it, and that works. They all start to wake up, and the Avengers all come at Thanos. There's some fun stuff going on in this comic, man. Oh, way more ads. So Thanos, obviously, he's going to start getting swamped pretty quickly. He calls his thralls into the room. Jim Starlin calls them thralls several times over the course of the issue. So now the Avengers have a little bit too much on their plate, maybe, except the thing comes back into it. So the Thing and Thor are going to go at Thanos here while the Avengers take care of all the space criminals. And you get this shot of the Thing restraining Thanos while Thor does the big wind-up with Mjolnir, which is kind of awesome. This is a pretty good page altogether, this splash. We got a few decent splashes. There were better ones in Avengers Annual Number 7, but, you know, that's not to discount what's going on in this issue, I think. And yeah, just some fun melee brawl stuff. Get a bit of focus on... As many Avengers as you can. We're getting close to the end of the issue, so you can't quite get everybody. There's a lot of Avengers. But we can at least get the smashy ones, like the Beast, Captain America, Iron Man, Captain Marvel. Uh, I don't see... I think Scarlet Witch is the only one who didn't really get any action. I, you know, that's probably for the best. I mean, at this point, what's she going to do? She's going to wander around and just go, You are hexed, and you are hexed. Just, oh, such unfortunate events are going to happen to you. And while the other Avengers are dealing with the lesser minions, Thor and the Thing keep hammering away at Thanos. 
Thanos is holding his own at first. Thor gets a big swing on him with Mjolnir. Uh, knocks him right towards the Thing, who does a big old uppercut. This is a fun sequence here. Just these three tears. And the force of the Thing's blow propelled Thanos far away enough that he can use uh, some eye lasers that he has. Okay, sure. And uh, you get an awesome shot here of Thanos just blasting the Thing and Thor away from him. That's the kind of thing I would like to see referenced more often. So Spidey wakes up. And uh, he's heavily concussed. And he's got to try and do something. Meanwhile, Chaos and Order are influencing him to try and get to the Soul Gem and release Adam Warlock. Thanos has the gem currently in a little, like, snow globe-looking thing. And uh, Spidey's going to have to smash that thing. Of course, he can barely even... He can't even really see what he's doing anymore. His brain's so fucked up. Meanwhile, inside the Soul Gem... Uh, Placid, peaceful Adam Warlock gets a sudden aneurysm as Chaos and Order reach out to him. And he says he's being pulled back, drawn from the gem, being called back to reality for one last task. One last mission of vengeance. It's like, yes, Adam Warlock is in the house. And at this point, uh, Chaos and Order are aiding Spider-Man. They're basically just pumping his uh, spider sense up to maximum levels. So, because... He can't. He can barely make decisions. He can't really see, so he needs to rely on his on yeah his spider sense to just act on his behalf. And he realizes that he's being compelled in some way to get to this gem and he and to release Adam Warlock. He doesn't exactly know how to do it. So he just starts flailing around because he's still got waves of uh, Thanos's thralls to get through, and he just. Yeah, tries to, like, body check them out of the way. He's just slamming his way through and just starts flailing his arms around. Because he figures he's got to be getting closer to the gem. Eventually, this has got to work, right? And it does. He just knocks the gem off the, uh, the little plinth here. And big old flash of light. And he's like, I did it! What'd I do? And Adam Warlock appears. Uh, not quite in his regular form. He's, like, flaming apparition form. And proclaims himself the ultimate Avenger with his giant flame dick. Uh, you know, that's him coming out of the Soul Gem. But Thanos is like horrified by this turn of events. It's like he realizes he has no chance at victory now. Adam Warlock approaches and in a quick three panels gets his hands on Thanos' neck. Big flash of light. And the smoke clears and Thanos has been reduced to a stone statue. The Adam Warlock apparition is gone, and at the sight of their master's defeat, uh, all of Thanos' thralls just surrender. Spidey asks Captain Marvel, what do you think they're going to do with him? And Captain Marvel's like, eh, probably let him go. He's like, what? Are you serious? They tried to destroy the solar system. He's like, okay, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to, like, imprison them on Earth? Like, thousands of space criminals? That seems like a bad idea. That would cause more problems than just letting them disperse and cause all sorts of smaller problems elsewhere in the galaxy. So a weird kind of pragmatic note to end on. This feels like the kind of thing that Jim Starlin particularly likes, like ethical dilemmas. And then we finish up with a funeral for Adam Warlock, Gamora, and Pip. And we get kind of a big eulogy from Captain Marvel about Adam Warlock here, about how he was, he always kind of stood apart from everybody else, and he was compelled to do the right thing, but was never felt accepted, but still managed to die helping others. And it's like, that, I mean, you know, you can't ask for much more. And shot here of Adam Warlock's tombstone. Here lies Adam Warlock, God Slayer, savior of two worlds and tormented soul. With his soul gem laid on his grave here. I didn't notice that the first time I read this through. That seems like a bad idea, but that's okay. And then one little epilogue later, Spidey feels sad about Adam Warlock. Uh, meanwhile, Adam Warlock is back inside the Soul Gem. And he's got his, I would assume, uh, soul girlfriend and his dead buddy with him. So he's all good. And Thanos is stuck as, it seems like a living statue. Although, I'm pretty sure that he does eventually die in this form. Because this is the thing. Thanos wouldn't be... A presence again in the Marvel Universe until 1990. His rock form shows up once or twice in the next couple of years after this. 
And he shows up a little bit in uh, the death of Captain Marvel. And I think uh, persuades him to accept death. But that's more of like a telepathic meeting or uh, souls commuting, something like that. And that is the kind of thing I think I guess Thanos would do. That'd be an interesting one to look at one day. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, at this point, Thanos is dead for more than the next decade. And it feels like nobody really had any idea what to do with him aside from Jim Starlin. That's an interesting thing, is that up until now, Thanos has been written almost exclusively by Jim Starlin. Uh, when he first gets started up, and a few of the issues of Captain Marvel that he's in, where he, he starts to get the Cosmic Cube, those are written by somebody else. But Jim Starlin kind of, you know, I mean, he created him, and then I guess once he gets a handle on the writing, he's totally propelling that character, and he's also doing all of the art. It is interesting that Thanos as a character was written, yeah, like almost completely by just the one guy up until the end of the Infinity Gauntlet, really. And speaking of, next time we're going to be talking about the next time Thanos makes an, an appearance, which is in Silver Surfer, and uh, we're going to focus mostly on the Thanos quest. So that'll be a good time. That'll be probably a bit of a long video, actually. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notifications so you know when the next one's coming out. Go over and subscribe on my Patreon. It gives you early access to everything I do, from the Blood Force stuff to the YouTube videos, before they get uploaded to YouTube, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. You can also follow me on Instagram and DM me there for commissions, and you can join the Blood Force Discord server. But yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.